All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to another special lesson we have on our subject introduction to the philosophy of the human person. Okay, for this lesson, I'm going to talk about one of the uh, major pillars of the methods of philosophizing. Okay, as you all know, there are at least uh, in philosophy, there are four uh, major approaches to, to the methods of philosophizing. That is, uh, by the use of uh, logic, you can use phenomenology, existentialism, and analytic tradition. So for this lesson, ang pagtutunan natin ng pansin ay yung analytic tradition. Okay? Because it has something to do with uh, one of the uh, special branches of philosophy, and that is metaphysics. At dito tatalakay natin yung aspeto ng theodicy. Okay? For our objectives, at the end of this lesson, the students should have learned to distinguish opinion from truth, analyze situation that shows the distinction between opinion and truth, evaluate what is an opinion, and then realize that the methods of philosophizing lead to wisdom and truth. Now, at the opening of the lesson, I posted there a challenge. Uh, uh, this challenge uh, gives you two options. As you can see dun sa illustration, there's the red pill and then the blue pill. Okay? So, kung kayo ay papipiliin between the two, kung pipiliin niyo yung red pill, okay, you can go anywhere in the past, no? Of your past, of your personal past, mamili ka. But if you take the blue pill, bibigyan ka ng pagkakataon to go back into the time of Jesus to be a living witness to all His miracles. At para malaman mo din kung totoo talaga si Jesus. Well, technically, yes. Because historically, siya ay figure ng ating kasaysayan. Sa mga leading figure ng ating kasaysayan. So, anong pipiliin mo? Yung red to go anywhere in your past or yung blue to go back at the time of Jesus. Hmm. So, pick your pill. Ano sa dalawas tingin mo yung mas okay sa'yo. Di ba? Now, speaking of Jesus, ayan, one of the fundamental questions about philosophy is the concept of God. Isa yan eh. Yung tanong about God. Okay? Now, like I said, uh, to give you a springboard to this discussion, allow me to give you a, a passage here written by Rick Warren on his book, The Purpose of Driven Life in 2002. Dahil isa to sa mga tatalakay natin ngayong araw na to, since we're talking about analytic tradition in, as one of the methods of philosophizing. So, God. Pag sinabi kong concept of God, huwag nyo munang isipin yung kung anong God ang kinakatigan ninyo. Hindi to, I'm not now talking of your Christian God, your Iglesia ni Cristo God, or Saksi ni Jehovah God. So, in philosophy, we're just talking about the concept of a supernatural, all-powerful being we call God. That's it. We don't label that entity as siya si Jehovah, si Yahweh, or what. Okay? So, God lang siya. Now, in this passage, allow me to read. No? No? Basahin nyo rin, then meron kayong task dyan. So, where is the glory of God? So, just look around. Everything created by God reflects His glory in surroundings. We see it everywhere. Okay? From the smallest microscopic form of life to the vast Milky Way. From sunsets to sunrise to storms and seasons. The whole of creation reveals our Creator's glory. In nature, we learn that God is powerful, that He enjoys variety, loves beauty, is organized, is wise, and creative. So, what is God? Who is God? And does God really exist? Yan ang tanong ng maraming tao. So, para sa inyo, may tanong ako dyan na binato, dalawa sila. The first question is, 
Are the above statements by Rick Warren, are they factual or just based on mere personal opinion? If yes, justify why. If no, why not? And then the second question is, what is the connection between knowing something and being certain of it? Okay? Dapat ipaliwanag nyo kung ano yung pinagkaiba ng knowing something. Sa Tagalog, sabi nga na kanina ng mga taga St. Paul at St. Angela. Knowing something ay yung meron kang alam. But to be certain of something is different. Ano ibig sabihin ng certain? Yung maging sigurado ka. Iba yung may alam sa sigurado ka dun sa alam mo. Dahil magkaiba yan. So, later on, we'll talk about that. But now, we, we, we focus ourselves in the, the, uh, the very aspect of our subject matter, and that is God. No? The study of God begins long, long time ago. Kaya nga sa mga Griego, di ba, may mga Olympian gods sila. Okay, there's a study about Theos or their deity, because theos in Greek means the study of God. So therefore, theodicy, or natural theology, it is the justification of the goodness of God in the existence of evil. Because we portray God as the source and epitome of all goodness. Ngayon, sa kasaysayan ng uh, Christianismo, especially in the 15th and 16th century, meron isang doctor of the church na binigyang no binigyang kasagutan ang napaka-controversial na tanong na to at yan ay walang iba kundi si St. Thomas Aquinas doctor of the church so yung mga fundamental questions about the existence of god at kung kinakailangan bang magsamba o manampalataya o manhalig sa isang no hindi nakikitang nila lang ngunit pinaniniwalaan ay nararapat ba no so, yan ang kanyang sinagot sa kanyang sikat at kilalang libro na pinamagatang Suma Theologica. Gamit ang analytic tradition na pinagsamang Socratic, Platonic, Aristotelian logic, ginamit niya ang lahat ng kalamang ito upang bigyang patotoo at patunayan na totoong merong nag-i-exist o merong nabubuhay na isang makapangyarihang nilalang in the midst of humanity. And how did he prove this? Ginamit niya, sabi ko nga, ang analytic tradition using all the methods of philosophizing. Dahil ang kalaban niya doon, eh, mga, mga scholastics, mga heretics, no? yung mga dininiwala sa Diyos, atheists, at saka yung mga tinatawag na fundamentalists. Kasi sila yung nagsasabing, you know, yung pag hindi kayang saklawin ng human senses, ang isang bagay, hindi pwede maging totoo. O pwede mong pagdudahan ang existence nito kung hindi siya pasok sa senses ng tao. Kaya pinatunayan niya ito sa kanyang libro, Suma Theologica. At ito ay binubuo ng at least yung kanyang five proofs o yung tinatawag na five ways of St. Thomas in proving the existence of God. Umpisa natin dun sa first argument niya, which is the argument from motion, where everything that is moving is moved by another. Ang tinatawag niya dito ay yung sinasabing prime mover. Ano ang nagpapagalaw sa lahat ng mga bagay sa mundo? Bakit umaagos ang tubig? Bakit gumagalaw ang, ang mga puno? Sabihin mo, kasi may hangin, sir. O tama, ngayon, ano ang nagpapagalaw sa hangin? O, so you can give all the scientific explanations kung ano ang nagpapagalaw. Pero ang sabi ni St. Thomas, we cannot go ad infinitum. Hindi, po, hindi tayo pwedeng umatras kung saan, ano ang pinakakahulugan, ano ang pinagmulan ng paggalaw ng lahat ng bagay. So, bakit tumataas ang kamay mo? Bakit mo baba? Kasi gusto, diktaya ng aking mind. Anong, anong nagtutulak? Anong nagbumove sa mind mo? Utak ko, sir. Anong nagtutulak sa utak mo? Yung will ko, sir. Anong nagtutulak sa will mo? So, that's it. That's it. We cannot go ad infinitum. Hindi tayo pwedeng, you know, to go on eternity, yan ang ibig sabihin ng ad infinitum. To go on eternity na pabalik. So, in other words, it is necessary to arrive at the first mover, ang unang nagpagalaw ng lahat. And that is what we call God. The second argument is argument from efficient cause. Like the first argument, 
ang tanong iyong, ano naging dayla ng bagay na ito? Alam nyo ba, tatandaan nyo yung kilalang uh, argumento tungkol sa itlog at manok. Na kung sino daw ang nauna, yung bang itlog o yung manok. Kasi hindi magkakaroon ng manok kung walang itlog. Hindi magkakaroon ng itlog kung walang manok. Ngayon, ang tanong, ano ang una? Tanong na una. Same as with this argument. Nothing in this word is the cause of itself. Okay? If the series of efficient cause extends ad infinitum, then there would be no things existing now. Therefore, it is necessary to admit that ang unang dahilan ng lahat sa ating kasaysayan, sa ating kapaligiran, ay gawa ng isang makapangyarihan nila. Sapagkat tingnan mo ang bundok, gawa ba ng tao yan? Tingnan mo ang dagat, gawa ba ng tao yan? Nakakagawa ang tao ng swimming pool, ng resorts, pero ang dagat at the snap of a finger, can, you, can, can man do that? Kaya ba gumawa ng tao ng planeta? O so, ano ang cause? Sino ang cause? So, that's why it is necessary to admit that the first cause of everything is God. Punta tayo dun sa pangatlo. The argument from possibility and necessity. Kaya yan ang natanong natin, kailangan ba talaga maniwala sa isang makapangyarihang Diyos? Sabi dyan, every being in this world is composed of matter and form. And when we speak of everything that is composed of matter and form, parang tayo. By form, we have our body, we have our system, skeletal system, nervous system, the muscular system, and all. That is all form. Pero pag tayo namatay, the very essence of our being, matter, tayo ay alabok, tayo ay alikabok, tayo na aagnas. So, we change. We undergo changes. No, we undergo changes. So, tayo ay buhay, pero ang possibility natin ay mamatay, maging alikabok. Ang puno na buhay, pero kanyang possibility ay maging papel, maging upuan, maging lamesa. So, di ba ang dami? However, there is an entity that exists na hindi siya pwedeng maging product ng iba. No? Ang kaya nga ibig sabihin dyan, but each possible being has a time and it does not exist. So, bago tayo nag-exist, bago nag- nag- naganap ang lahat ng ito, may nauna. Merong nauna. At yung kanyang existence ay hindi naging resulta ng ibang puwersa. Dahil kung ang God ay na- na-create lang o yung kanyang existence ay hiram sa creation ng iba, ay hindi siya God. Di ba? Kasi ang God is all-powerful eh. O kaya kung hiram ang kanyang existence, hindi siya God. Therefore, it is necessary to admit that at the beginning of time, when everything is blank, there is an entity, a being, that exists far of all, uh, in all beings. And that entity is called God. That's why it is necessary to believe that before us, even before time began, there was God. Fourth argument is the argument from gradation of being. When we say gradation, there is a degree. Meron degree po yan. No? There is a degree, a varying degree. And uh, when, when we mean by degree, it could be beautiful, ugly, no? and we speak of what we call perfection. So how do we explain perfection? Napakasimple sa ating kalikasan. Tumingin ka sa bahay ng gagamba. Yung sapot-sapot. Di ba? O. Yung, kung pag nakikita mo yung gagamba na gumagawa ng kanyang bahay, di ba nakikita mo yung perfection ng symmetrical design ng kanyang bahay na kahit saan siyang sulok, magagawa niya yung sapot na yon na in perfect symmetrical at mayroong gitna yung center ng lahat ng, ng kanyang bahay. Ganon din sa mga ibon sa paggawa nila ng pugad and all. Di ba nakakamangha? Di ba nakaka, nakakawaw? So kung merong level ng perfection ng ganito na nakikita sa creation, merong source ng perfection na ito. At hindi pwedeng, you know, hindi pwedeng tangkain ng tao na sabihing tayo ang perfect being. No? Dahil kahit tayo, we will admit na hindi tayo ang perfect being. There must be a perfect being. 
and the perfect being which is the source of all goodness, lahat ng kabutihan, and the source of all perfection is called God. The last argument is the argument from design. Every being such as our natural bodies is directed towards its goal. Whatever lacks knowledge cannot move towards a goal. Okay? Ito, hindi ito gagalaw mag-isa kung walang magpapagalaw. Tama? Okay? One entity from point A cannot go to point B without a force guiding it or moving it. You see? Parang ikaw. Una, isipin mo na lang, sa dami ng nilalang na pwede maging ikaw, bakit ka naging tao? Di ba? Pwede ka maging, you know, maging ibon, maging daga, maging pusa. Pwede maging, maging garapata ng aso mo. De, joke lang. Di ba? Pwede ka maging kahit ano. Dahil hindi mo naging choice on the first place na maging ikaw. So, sino ang, sino ang naging author ng buhay mo? Sabi mo na, niya tatay mo. O, di ba? Hindi. Okay? It was not your own personal will that you were born into this world as a human person. Something, someone, must have decided to be the author of your life and you were born here on earth as a human person. Dahil hindi mo saklaw yung will na yun. And that you are born here. Why? What is your purpose? Sabi nga ni Rick Warren. Okay? Kumbaga, uh, ano eh, ganito yan eh. Kumbaga sa pana. Di ba? Ano ang pana? May, may pana, mayroong target, mayroong goal, at mayroong palaso. Yung goal sa buhay mo, sabi natin yun yung goal, yun ang target. Ikaw yung palaso, syempre. Di ba? Ikaw yung palaso, ikaw yung papunta sa goal eh. Pero sino yung humahawak ng pana? At sino yung magre-release ng palaso papunta sa goal na yan? Yun ang misteryo. Dahil hindi mo pwedeng sabihin ako o sarili mo lang. Ang may kakayanan, marating yung mga dapat mo marating. There must be something that will motivate you, drive you, or inspire you. At ang sagot ni St. Thomas, God. O, oh, di ba? <laughs> Sabi niya, some intelligent beings exist by whom all natural things are directed to their end. Huh? Then, hindi mo kaya. That is God. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yan po ang tinatawag na five ways using the analytic traditional approach na ginawa ni St. Thomas in proving the existence of God. And from that standpoint, the, the fate of man has been strengthened that they are not alone. That in life, they are not simply just, you know, chess pieces moved by supernatural powers according to their whim. But there is this source of goodness which is all-powerful, all-merciful, all-loving creator we call God. All right. So, that is why, as part of the topic on analytic tradition, ang pinakalaging unang tinatanong ay, alam ba natin i-distinguish ang truth sa opinion? So, alam ngayon, alam nyo na na uh, God is real. God is true. And that's why, until now, people believe in God. But, okay, in going through truth and opinion, okay, the simplest definition okay, of truth is that it is an accepted statement. Accepted statement because it agrees with facts and is supported by evidence. Yan ang truth. Hindi, hindi mo na pwedeng, <coughs> excuse me, kontrahin to argue with dahil yun eh, given na siya. However, yung opinion kasi, it is a personal statement. A personal statement, hindi nag agree sa facts or reality at maring hindi siya supported ng available evidence or proofs. So, masama ba ang opinion? Hindi. Di ba? Balikan natin nga yung lesson 1 natin, di ba? The lesson 2, dun sa values of philosophy. Di ba? So, dun sa number 2, under the you know, values of doing philosophy, it says there, 
Philosophy helps the student to form opinions and beliefs. Kaya hindi mas mga opinion. Okay? Ang opinion yung pinaka-start ng, you know, nung pag, uh, ayun yung pinaka-simula kung paano natin gilingin, okay? linangin ang ating kaalaman sa filosofiya. Pero mag-ingat tayo kasi siyempre, sa, sa philosophy, ang, pinaka, ang pinaka-goal natin is to arrive on truths with the help of opinions. So you it, you have to you know swing between opinion and truth because in reality dun tayo sa truth syempre di ba And when we speak of truth we refer to statements of fact and there's statements of opinion ayan So pag sinabing fact it is true supported by evidence pag sinabing of opinion it's just a personal feeling a personal view a personal belief kaya ako ito binabagin sa inyo dahil dapat sa edad nyo yan, alam nyo na ang pinagkaiba between the two. However, mag-ingat tayo sa sinasabing solid opinion. Kasi yung solid opinion ay yung mga klase ng opinion na maaaring uh, parang totoo. Pero sabi nga dyan, it is not necessarily based on facts themselves. No? For example, uh, madilim ang kalangitan hindi mo pwedeng sabing uulan because madilim ang kalangitan. Pwede mong sabihing umulan o uulan, sorry, yan ay opinion. Dahil hanggat hindi nangyayari, hindi pwedeng sabihing truth. Hindi po ba? Alimbawa, ang teacher, hindi dumating sa klase nyo ng, sa loob ng 30 minutes. Agad-agad ba sasabihin mo, absent si sir o absent si ma'am? E paano kung talagang sadya lang siyang nagpalate o malilate talaga siya at nagpaalam naman at darating sa klase ninyo? After one hour, e eh, nagsialisan kayo, lobas kayo ng classroom. O, edi, opinion nyo lang yun. No? Kaya po, uh, meron tayong quick check dito. Pag-usapan natin yan sa meeting natin. Okay, tingnan natin kung gaano katalas ang inyong desertion between truth and opinion. Pero paalala lang, bago magtapos, ang ating lesson is yung Truth and opinion can be easily discerned okay, by the following guidelines. Okay, number one, sabi dyan, ito yung mga guidelines na to show the differences between the two. Inulit ko, when we speak of truth, it is accepted statement. It means it is socially no, accepted by people. When they are not accepted socially or by the majority of the public, it remains an opinion. Truth comes from the heart. Tandaan nyo yan. And that reality follows from the heart. Di ba? Ang pagkasabi ng totoo, gagaling sa damdamin, sa puso. Okay? At higit sa lahat, kapag nasusupress o napipigilan ang pagkasabi ng totoo, ay nako, kailangan mo ng tapang at lakas ng loob. It takes a lot of courage. No? It takes a lot of courage to tell the truth. Dahil mahirap talaga eh. Mas gusto yung nilang manahimik kaysa magsabi ng totoo. Mas gusto mo nalang manahimik kaysa masak- makasakit ng damdamin ng tao. Pero dapat sinasabi mo yung totoo. Dapat alam mo sabi ng totoo. At higit sa lahat, kapatid, dapat alam mo rin, no, magkaroon ka rin, bukod sa magkaroon ng lakas ng loob sa pagsasabi ng katotohanan, higit din sa lahat ay magkaroon ka din ng lakas ng loob tanggapin kung ano ang katotohanan. Tandaan mo yan. So, facing the truth requires a lot of courage. Truth is always real. Reality is not always true. O kaya, kung hindi ka crush ng crush mo, eh, wala tayo magagawa. Eh, yun ang truth eh. No? Kaya nga sabi dyan eh, tanggapin mo na lang at magmubuo na lang sa buhay. Okay? <laughs> Alright, so that ends our discussion for today about uh, truth and opinion and using analytic tradition in the concept of the metaphysical you know, question about God. So, to end this, remember that the statement of opinion is one whose content is always subjective o pansarili lang and is not supported by evidence. Whereas a statement of fact adheres to truth, okay, supported by evidence, very objective, hindi subjective, objective, because it is supported by available facts. And there you go. Okay, kung meron po kayong tanong, pwede po mag-comment sa ating section dyan at sa ating mga komentaryo. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik. Muli po, 
Ito po ang inyong lingkod, si Pilosopo Sotero na nag-iiwan at nagsasabi sa inyong Okay lang ang maging pilosopo, basta tunay ka at nagpapakatotoo. Bye-bye!